I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and my neighborhood was very, um, was very segregated, quite honestly. I mean, I grew up in the late 60s. And if you think about the context of those times and just the, the tension around those times, I don't think I ever, before I turned uh, six years old, I had never really been exposed to white people, quite honestly, because we never really had to leave our neighborhood. And my dad was the butcher in the neighborhood. And then, as, as you know very well, um, Martin Luther King was assassinated and my entire world changed. Our neighborhood went up in flames. There was civil unrest. Um, my dad's butcher shop was looted and burned. And I can recall vividly him, you know, leaving the house every day, um, you know, armed and sleeping in the butcher shop to ensure that it was safe. And he would come home during the day and, and ask me to help him make a sign that said, owned by a soul brother, so we could put the sign in the window so it didn't get looted and burned again. Um, and so it was a very tumultuous time. And so, you know, my neighborhood on the one hand, I have such really beautiful, vivid memories of safety and um, this one community. Uh, there was also, you know, this part that brought into sharp focus for me, the true divisions that were happening in this country. You know, Minneapolis is a community that in many ways is the tale of two cities. Um, it's a community that um, has really thrived and prospered uh, economically um, overall. Um, but for communities of color, um, that hasn't been the case. U.S. Bank is the fifth largest um, commercial bank in the country, located uh, in Minneapolis. We're comprised of over 70,000 employees. And, you know, we offer, you know, a wide range of financial services. We're in uh, 26 states um, across the United States, obviously have a uh, a robust digital platform. You know, banks do, you know, three things in my mind. It's workforce development, economic development, and community development. And I think, you know, at its core, U.S. Bank is committed to those three things. And, you know, our purpose is all about people, which is, you know, one of the things that, you know, attracts me to the organization is it's a people-centered um, organization. And I, and I don't say that in a cliche kind of way, like it really is. You know, banking is never a field that um, I, I would have anticipated that I would have gravitated to. It just never seemed like an accessible career. Even as a young person, um, you know, I firmly believe corporations are mirrors for society. And you just don't see many um, black executives in financial services. When I first heard about George Floyd. Uh, I was at home, like most of us, quarantined, working from home. And, you know, if you recall, um, he, was, he was killed on Memorial Day. And so it was the day after Memorial Day, and I remember it was a Tuesday morning. I got a call on my cell phone, and it was our CEO, Andy Ciceri. And so I picked up the phone and he said, um, good morning, Greg, this is Andy. And I said, good morning, Andy, how are you? And he said, I'm doing well, have you seen the news? And I said, yes. And he said, Greg, I'm really, you know, I'm really troubled by this and I just wanna, you know, talk with you about, you know, what I should be doing, what we should do as an organization, but more importantly, I'm calling to check on you. I had no idea that it would come over here. I didn't know it would land on my doorstep like that. And business was great. It was great when I opened up. It was, and you know, I had the bank right across the street and deposit every couple of days, you know. And I love what I do. I love the community. I love working on West Broadway. It was just part of my life. It was my lifestyle just to be there every day. When the ride started, like I said, we were just, you know, getting ready to come out of the pandemic, you know, to open up the business. And two days later, my, um, two days before opening, my business burnt all the way. It took away my dream, it took away my life, it took away everything. The U.S. Bank has been in this community and we're not going anywhere. Um, we are continuing to um, rebuild and um, ensure that this community 
um, bring financial services and you know we rebuild so that those communities have banking resources um, available to them. Um, we're providing over $100 million um, annually um, available to black-owned businesses in particular. So that's the commitment we've made. We're not going anywhere. From a banking relationship, we've been banking with U.S. banks since the very start, right? And so that's been a very good relationship. They've really stepped up with a very bigger presence. Yeah, U.S. Bank has been a partner with ours for a number of years, though, so you've been supporting us uh, all along. You've helped build us as an organization. Uh, but right now, it's the opportunity to inject resources into the community at a critical time, and I think that's uh, extremely important. I mean, this is we have an inflection point right now, and U.S. Bank has stepped up in a major way. So we're just thrilled with that leadership um, and the resources that allow us to really help our clients not only survive, but we want them to flourish. 14-year-old kid who used to print t-shirts, uh, loved music, and cut hair. Capital that I needed was huge for me. It gave me first confidence <laughs> to complete the pre-development process of my project, which is now slated for building permit. It, it has always been my plan to own and operate my own business. I decided to just go for it and let the chips fall where they may, you know, so that's kind of what I did. Even with all the um, unsettlement that has happened and the, all the stuff that's going on, I still believe that North Minneapolis is kind of on an uprise to do better things and to grow and to be, you know, something great. You know, I, I've never had a greater sense of clarity about what I'm tasked to do. My job is quite simple, and it is really to ensure that um, our purpose as an organization, which is to power human potential, um, that that's true for everybody. My job is to fight for every single employee in the organization so that their voice um, is heard and that they feel valued and they, they have whatever opportunities are deserving of them. Um, my job is to ensure that that happens. I think there are three things that organizations should do um, to really advance their commitment and outcomes to social justice. The first one is committing themselves to advancing um, minority talent, and specifically black talent within their organization. The second thing is committing um, to supporting small businesses, uh, small minority owned businesses. And then the final thing is I think leadership really needs to be vocal about denouncing systemic racism. The time has come where we have to put words to it and leadership has to be courageous in talking about um, and articulating what we're talking about.